Hello everyone, a very good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all. Myself, I I welcome all of you to today's session of Visual J Forex in which we will be starting off fresh with a new indicator to design and develop algorithm for profitable trading on the J Forex platform. We are going to deal with the indicator named Time Segmented Volume which has been shortened as TVS on the Visual J Forex platform. So let us now go to the Visual J Forex board, which has been developed by the Ducoscopy Bank SA. You will find these indicators listed amongst the volume indicators just below the OPV. Last session was dedicated to OBV. And this is fairly similar to OBV. Here also we take into account the volume data along with the price action to look at the momentum and possibility of a change in the momentum. And that's what we are going to capitalize on in this logical formation using this indicator TVS. I will give you a brief idea of what the logic is. Prior to that, I would also like to let you know that if you want to go into the details of this uh, indicator, how it functions and uh, how it is derived, you can refer to the earlier session which I had done in the introductory series. This time around, I will be more concerned with the functional aspects of this indicator and we will not really go into the details of how it is calculated. So let us now look at the logic for the design and development of the TVS based algorithm for trading. This is the US 30 chart which I will change to Euro USD. We will be working with the Euro USD as the default instrument with the candle period of 15 minutes. And I have already plotted this TVS indicator with the default time period of 50. So last 50 candles of 15 minutes each will be taken into consideration while deriving the output value for the TVS. And this is a unbound oscillator indicator. Unbound means there is no final cap on uh, what the value can be on the lower side on the or on the higher side so it ranges it is uh, not as a like uh, limited it can be minus 100 minus 30 minus 200 depending on the price action data here it is minus 42 and uh, on the higher side here it was close to 50 And the classical interpretation of this indicator is that if the value is below zero, that is indicative of the bearish trend. And if the output value for this indicator is above zero, that is indicative of the bullish trend. And by bullish, you mean that the money is flowing in for the underlying instrument, the accumulation is happening. And if the money is flowing out, that means distribution of the underlying asset is happening. And that's what we consider while looking to go for the optimum entry and exit points using this indicator. And uh, this time around, we will uh, not use the zero as our marking point. You will not really go for the new trade when the value changes from one side to the other side. The reason for doing that is that we have many a times a situation where the price oscillates between a very narrow range and this time around we can get a lot of false signals and uh, to avoid that what we are doing this time around is to get the price action on our side we will be looking into divergence where we have already seen significant amount of move happening and if we then see the possibility of price action reverting back to the mean then we will go for the trade and for that we will rely on these TVS data along with the price action and by divergence I mean the TVS value should start to rise whereas the price action still is uh, in decline and if eventually if the price action also catches up with the TVS data and it starts to rise then that will be the opportune time for us to get involved for the new trade and to make sure there has been significant amount of move already in the underlying instrument, we will take into account last hourly price action data, whatever is the difference between the closing value of the last 15 minute candle and the 15 minute candle which closed one hour back. We will take that into account. We will multiply it with a suitable factor to make sure 
that it is large enough and then we will take the time interval of uh, four hours last hourly candle close and the uh, hourly candle closed which had closed four hours back or five hours back since we need time interval of four hours then i think we will need to consider the last uh, candle along with the candle which had closed five hours back so we will have the time interval of four hours so we will compare that closing difference and we will compare the closing difference or last one hour and uh, accordingly we will take the trade so that's how the logic is going to be and now i will explain to you what the buy side requirement is going to be and what the sell side requirement is going to be so first we will consider the buy side requirement as i said we are looking into the divergence and for that we will consider the output value of the tvs for the last 15 minute candle close and if it is higher compared to the output value over one hour back so we will take the last 15 minute candle and we will take the shift value 5 that is look back of 5 so we will have the candle interval of 1 hour so here the time is 6 GMT let me go to the time which was 5 GMT so 1 2 3 4 this is last one so the look back rate is going to be 1 then 2 3 4 5 so here we have this 5 GMT output value for the TVS we will compare this and if we see that the 6 GMT TVS output is higher compared to the 5 GMT TVS output we will look at the price action and if the closing value of the last 15 minute candle close is lower compared to the 5 GMT closing value then we will uh, look to initiate the buy trade provided there was sufficient decline prior to this uh, consolidation so we will uh, look for this requirement and i think this time around it is not as per our requirement so no trade will happen let us now consider different data here we have the tvs output at uh, 1245 gmt higher than the output at 1145 gmt and let me look at the closing value if it is still lower then there will be divergence as per our requirement so 1145 gmt closing value yes indeed we have the divergence in place so whatever is the difference between these two 15 minute candle closing values we will take into consideration we will multiply it by at least two and uh, we will then place the order on the higher side so as and when the price starts to rise the execution will happen if it continues to decline no execution will happen and also to make sure there was significant decline prior to this consolidation possible reversal on the tvs we will uh, multiply this difference with uh, the factor of eight and we will consider the closing interval difference of last hourly candle so we will take i think second last will be proper so we will take hourly data into consideration and we go back to the time around 11 45 gmt so here the second last candle close we will consider and we will consider the candle which had closed five hours back so we will get the time interval of four and we will take the difference into account whatever is the actual difference and that should be more than eight times the difference of the last hourly interval and only if that requirement is in place the execution will go through and for sale side we will simply invert the condition whatever is the requirement for the buy side we want those conditions to be inverted so for sale trade to execute we will need the tvs value to start decline while the price action is still on the higher side the price action is showing the continuous rise so somewhere around here we do have the output value of the tvs going into decline but the price action data is still on the higher side so if we consider the output value of the TVS at 530 GMT, 530 GMT is this. And uh, then we will consider the 
TBS output at 430 GMT and we can see that the 530 GMT output of the TBS is below the 430 GMT output of the TBS and if we consider the price action data then the closing value of the 15 minute, minute candle which closed at 530 GMT is higher than the closing value of the 15 minute candle which had closed at 430 GMT we have the divergence in place so whatever is the divergence we will take that into account we will consider the actual difference between these two candles and multiply it by 2 and place the order on the lower side but as we had discussed while the buy side for the buy side we also want to make sure that there has been significant rise so we will consider the closing value at 430 GMT and then we go back 4 hours and look at the price action data at 030 GMT and there should have been rise and I think uh, that condition is not likely to be fulfilled as we need whatever is the actual difference between the last hourly interval the prior rise should be at least 8 times of that and so no trade will execute this time around only when we have significant up move and then the price action reversal the execution will happen so we are trying to actually look for the trades where we see that the underlying instrument has entered into a overbought or oversold scenario and now the reversal is just beginning so that's what the underlying logic is to execute it we have to now head back to the visual j forex board first thing first is to get the instrument subscription done for that we are going to need the logical components the e blocks i will use on candle as the start point All right, default variable, default instrument should match the candle instrument, then candle instrument should match the instrument of choice, which is going to be Euro USD. So let us now search for Euro USD here. There it is. All right. Then to make sure that we are not adding to any existing open or pending position, I will put in the condition that there should be no existing order in the system. So for that we take all position position amount and match it with 0. So this will be first input equals second input. And we will have the TVS candle period defined for 15 minutes with the look back period of 1. Here we will take, keep this time period with the default setting at 18. So I am not going to make any changes. Now I will add one more of the TVS block. This needs to be changed to 15 minutes. 
and the loopback rate is going to be 5. So we will have the time interval of 1 hour between these two TBS output values. And to look at the price action data, then we turn to the info components. So here comes the gate historical candle. We are going to need six of these. And I will shortly explain to you why we need six of these. First two are going to be of 15 minutes each. back period of one this one is also going to be a 15 minute and now the look back period is going to be five so we will have the difference of one hour between these two closing values candle 18 and candle 19 then we take two more of these get historical candles with a period of one hour each. The second last and sixth last hourly candle will be taken into consideration. So here I will change the candle period to hourly. Look back period of two. Here, this two will be ten seconds each. Look back period of one and two. To consider the actual difference between these 15 minute candles, we will have to deduct the closing values from each other. For the buy side, we need the closing to have happened on the lower side. So we will have the divergence and for sale side, we need the closing value to have happened on the higher side. So when we are looking at the difference, we will have to consider the deduction of the last 15 minute candle close from the 15 minute candle which had closed one hour back. And whatever is the difference, we will then multiply it with our desired factor for the buy side and for the sale side, it will be inverted and as we had discussed earlier. We will take into consideration the difference of the last 15 minute candle and the closing value of the 15 minute candle which had closed one hour back. So we will have to deduct the 15 minute can candle close with the look back period of 5 from the 15 minute candle with the look back period of 1 for the sale. So we now go back to 
visual j4 x board and we get both of these calculations done which will then come handy while defining the conditions for the execution of the trade so i am going to take auto created variables candle 19 candle close and deduct candle 18 can be close from it this difference will be used while defining the conditions for the execution of the buy trade a1 minus a2 I will name it BSD by side difference. And for sale side, we will be deducting the candle 19 candle close from candle 18 candle close. So again, this will be A1 minus A2. So there is going to be sell side difference. All right. So we have calculated these two values. And for the day, we stop here. When we come back next time around, I will be explaining to you how you can add the conditions for the execution of the buy trade and in the subsequent session we will deal with the sell side of the equation so that's it from my side for the day if you have any query or any idea to share you can write back to me in the feedback section for further coverage of the market developments do check out the decoscopy analytics page you are also available on the facebook you can reach out to us there for carrying out the testing on the historical data, you will need the assistance of the J4X platform. So all these links have been provided. And if you want the pop-up of the webinar on the J4X platform, please write back to me, write back in the review on the trust pilot. Thank you all for this time. See you next time. Till then, goodbye.